Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Today I am going to be painting and drawing some shells. And uh, I have a wonderful collection of shells actually, I'm really lucky. Here's a sand dollar. Um, we lived in Bermuda and the Bahamas for a while because my husband used to work in hotels. And uh, we were lucky enough to work for Fairmont for a while. And then later um, he went to work for somebody else in the Bahamas. And amazing shells were washed up onto the beaches um, there. And um, so <clears throat> I collected a wonderful, a big bowl full of them I have in the front room. Anyway, so I thought that would be something nice to paint. So I've been doing a few sketches here, just a, a few tryouts, and uh, so let's get started. So I've spent quite a lot of time over the last 24 hours, 36 hours, thinking about um, what kind of a design to do with uh, seashells. And um, I've looked at lots of um, things online and in books and in my head, and have been uh, wondering what to do exactly, but I've decided that I'm not going to try and be clever and come up with a stunning uh, design that will amaze the whole room. I'm going to just pick up a pencil and draw some shells using my real life shells here and my starfish as, um, as inspiration. And I'm just going to let things happen because Seashells are incredibly beautiful and they don't really need much um, to be done to them to make them worth painting. In fact, I think you could probably spend your whole life just uh, reproducing these amazing things on paper. I just remembered, just as I was thinking about this, I just remembered the book A Gift from the Sea by Anne Morrow Lindbergh, which um, Someone I used to know in Canada once who was almost a friend. We didn't know one another well enough to call ourselves friends, but she gave it to me, signed it, and wished me a happy life. That was years ago now. And um, so it's always whoops, stuck in my mind. Um, I always think of shells and sea when I think of Alberta. That's weird, isn't it, for a landlocked place? Anyway, so I'm just um, holding these and feeling them and seeing what to do with them and then I'm going to, I might start with the starfish actually on this piece of paper. I'm trying out today, is a, oh that's a pencil mark, um, I'm trying out my etcher paper so I have absolutely no idea how this is going to respond to the watercolour really. So we'll just, shall we just get started I suppose. I don't even know what that is. It looks like it might be a piece of coral or something, but it's an interesting... Anyway, stop wittering and get on with it. So, um, okay, starfish have five arms and um, they are really fascinating things. They have suckers underneath which and you have to be careful about this because otherwise they're going to all go out of shape now that's not right is it there we are that's better So what I think I'll do is, I think I'll just, um, oh, that's cool. Look at that in the center there. One, two, three, four, five. It's got little five pointed star in the center. And then it's got a kind of spine goes down each arm. 
And then it had suckers, sucker feet underneath. I can feed through those. And it's got lots of uh, dots all over it. This one's actually got sparkles on it too because this was a Christmas tree decoration. We got that in the Bahamas. So I'm going to just do the outline first of all and then and what I'm thinking, I might um, pretend that this is the line of the sea. So I might do a wiggly line down here and then I might do some blue here and some pink here for the sand. And the other thing um, that's really nice is, is these, this uh, sea urchin thingies. And they are amazing. And they're also full of dots as well, dots and dashes and circles and things. So I'm just going to outline that. So, and then it's got also uh, radial lines like this. So that's that. And then of course, this kind of shell, which uh, I'll find one that's a bit easier to draw perhaps. Well, that'll do. Um, so that's got a, a curve like that. And then all the, ra the uh, ribs go like that, getting smaller to the side like that. And then um, we could have one of these. <coughs> so that's got this kind of shape, kind of cone rounded at that end and then it sort of scoops down and it's round, 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 smaller and smaller and smaller till it gets to the point. There we are, something like that. And the lines go round like that. Uh, then one of these. So it starts with a little circle and they get bigger until it's a big one like that and then a little bit more like that and uh, I think that's probably enough maybe a piece of this whatever that is and it's got radials everything seems to have ribs And then probably we'll want to do some seaweed coming. Just a little bit of seaweed lying on the beach. Like that. Okay, so the colours of these are really very natural. So I've got my bright colours here, my Caribbean blue, turquoise blue, which I'll use for the sea area. Maybe I'll put a sand dollar in the sea. What do you think? So we'll just, I don't know if this is going to work out at all. These are amazing. Five holes on the top and then these fish-like shapes. They look like place, you know? Flat fish that you eat, they look just like that with Lines all around the outside edge like that, getting bigger. Amazing, and the whole thing's covered in dots, which I'm not going to do at the moment. So, and uh, yeah, so they're all natural colors. So I think um, we're going to have to make up some variations, we're going to have to emphasize the variations and make them more bluish. But first of all, let's see whether we can paint the sea. So I'm going to put, I can paint that uh, wet in wet first of all, so we'll just see how this goes. I'm going to be very disappointed if this paper doesn't work.
So let's start with turquoise. That noise was a sparrow just flying in and out. So turquoise and Caribbean blue. Just loosely. Okay, so far so good with the paper. Okay, good. That looks all right. And now this is going to be tricky. I've got to wet the whole of this around. I, I don't want to paint over the shells, so I'm giving myself a bit of a task here. So I'm going to paint around everything with water first of all, and then I'll drop in some pink. I'm going to have to go for the potter's pink here for the sand. I don't think that's a bad choice. What do you think? I think potter's pink might well work. If you can't see where you've put the water, just look at it slightly sideways on and you'll be able to see it's shinier where, um, where it's wet and where it's not wet, it's dull. So, uh, yeah. Um, right, potter's pink, where are you? I'm here, mummy. There we are, potter's pink, good as gold. Um, okay, so that's that's a good colour. I'm going to add a little bit of quinacridone gold to that to make it a bit more sandy. And I'm going to test that out. That's too dark. Always worth testing. Too dark and not pink enough. That's better. Maybe a little bit of pink, real pink in there. Here we go. Potter's pink is a granulating pink, which means that the particles of pigment in the paint are slightly heavier than, um, than they are in some other paints and they settle into the grain of the paper in an irregular way and sometimes they set up chemical interactions or reactions with other paints. So for example if you mix um, what's it called ultramarine with um, raw sienna, you get an interesting effect and the, the grey of the ultramarine will settle out quite a bit. Okay, so there we are and I'm just going to go and get a bulldog clip. in an effort to control this book. Uh, 
Okay, so we have a nice um, uh, wash there for the water and a nice wash here for the sand. And uh, when that dries, that will be quite a, a subtle sort of background kind of wash. And I'm just trying at the moment to think whether or not to do this pen and ink or whether to just do it with paint. And um, I think I'll paint it first and then see whether it needs anything. So the starfish could be uh, any colour actually. They come in lots of colours. So um, let's do it. What shall we do it in? Shall we do it blue? Shall we do it turquoise? What shall we do? Hmm. I think I will try blue. With perhaps a little bit of green. I'm just dropping the colours side by side and letting them blend on the paper. And I'll leave a few little tiny gaps. Okay, so that's the first layer. And then I think I will go into one of these shells with quinacridone and mm, potter's pink maybe. And uh, I've just indicated slightly the edge, the slightly irregular edge there. And then next to that, we have one of these little round ones. Um, what colour shall I make that? Shall I do that turquoise with a little bit of... Um, yes, let's make that one a sort of lilac-y colour. Oops, that's quite a lot of paint, isn't it? Let me spread that out. Oh, no, I'll leave that alone. And then this one wants to be, um, I think that one wants to be a sort of neutral color with, I like to keep an, a very restricted palette. I don't want too much in the way of different colors on here. So I'm going to go for Potter's Pink again on this one. Because it does, when you do it more strongly, it does contrast quite well with the background, you know. Where's my original gone? Oh, there it is. Yes. Make it a little bit bigger.
And this one here. We'll do that mode as well, I think. Uh, where's it gone? There. Okay. And then the sand dollar, this is quinacridone gold and potter's pink. That one's kind of crying out for um, some pen work on it, isn't it? So I'm going to let that dry before I paint round it. And then we've got the um, sea urchin. So that's also got quite an irregular outside edge when you look at it from the top. So we'll do that with the edge of the, the point of the brush. And I think that will, it's going to work. This is, as we were saying earlier, granulating colours are, nobody can really learn to paint unless they learn how to use granulating colours. You can't say, I don't like them because they don't, they're not interested in whether or not you like them, colours, are they? They're just interested in either granulating or not granulating and doing the job that they're designed for. What you don't want when you buy watercolours, you do not want colours that are full of opaque body. You don't want them looking like gouache unless you want gouache. And I've noticed a lot of handmade paints out there by, you know, back kitchen maker people doing it as a hobby and selling them. And they're full of basically chalk. Buy the best watercolours you can and then experiment perhaps with making your own. But don't waste your money on basically somebody else's kitchen table. There's a reason why there are experts in these things. Right, okay, that's good. And this paper is okay, it's buckling though. So it's getting a bit of a workout here. I'm going to just paint over the shape of the sand dollar now. And then I do really feel that I do want a few strands of seaweed lying on the beach, don't you think? And so I'm just going to mix up a, a bluish colour, bluish green, and we'll just drop in something like that. And then um, before I leave it to dry, I'm going to just drop in a little bit of shadow on this one. lines on that one. Still quite wet so I don't want to fiddle with that too much at the moment. 
Look how beautifully that's granulated. People mean they don't like granulation. In the right place, who, who could not like that? Sorry, am I being obnoxious? Probably. Uh, just putting some beautiful violet in there that I've just made from this turquoise blue and permanent rose. It's phenomenal. I can't believe that. It's the last thing you'd think. Okay, and I'm not going to play with that too. I think that's really cool, don't you? I love that little splosh. Pleased with that. That looks okay. We're going to just wet that and let that run. And now I'm going to go and make some sandwiches. And then, after we've had lunch, I'll come back and finish this. I love that potter's pink. It's just amazing. After lunch, I might um, put in a bit of line work, a bit of extra line work. I might put in some iridescent medium, perhaps, but I might not. And I will take off this edging, uh, which I put there to contain the paint. And uh, well, basically, I'm going to finish it off. But for now, I'll leave it like that. And I'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Okay, so this is dry now. So I'm back and uh, going to put some finishing touches on here. Now for the um, sand dollar, um, I need to put some texture on there. So I've cut a hole in a piece of paper, just an ordinary piece of paper, which is roughly the right size. And I'm going to put some toothbrush spatter on there to uh, just give it a little bit of texture. So I'm going for some um, Potter's Pink, which I'm going to pick up on my toothbrush like this. And um, I think maybe a little bit of Quinacridone Gold as well. And I'll just uh, try that out. Yes, that's fine. And uh, so then I'll just put some of that on there um, to give it some texture, like I said. And so that, that's fine, that looks quite nice. I don't know if you can see that. But yes, that's fine. I might put a little bit more because it will always dry a little bit lighter. So there we are, that's that. And um, I think I might do the same on the, uh, I always forget what these things are called. Sea urchin, yeah. So the same color. Different background, the same colour, and it'll look a little bit different. So we'll put that there like that. Um, and then the um, starfish, I'm going to uh, have a little bit of a, a go on there. I think I might put a little few dabs of um, iridescent on there. I might do a few, I might put some on the tips of the arms there and I might just run a little bit down the centre of each of the arms like that. Because it's pretty and because my particular model has got sparkles, so why not? Okay, and then I know that doesn't show terribly much, but it uh, it adds a little something when you're looking at it in real life. And then I might put some, if I can get my white pen to work, some white dots. You could do that in gouache as well. In fact, I might I'm not sure that that's showing up very well, so I think I'll just grab a, a little bit of white wash, fresh from the tube, so to speak, if I can find it. Here we go. And 
and um, I'll find a small brush. That's better. So I'm just putting that in rows down beside the line of silver. Small brushes don't last very long, you know, they soon break up, lose their hairs. And because they only have half a dozen hairs to start with, before you know where they are, you are, they stop working altogether. Everybody needs a tube of um, white gouache. Uh, Winsor & Newton designer gouache comes in lots of colours, but uh, mostly I use transparent watercolour, but when you want to do something like this, you need, you need opaque. Okay, maybe a little bit on the ends there, like that, just because. And then I might just strengthen the blue a little bit. I don't want to make it too dark, but... Uh, that in and then just kind of wash it out to give a few more interesting edges like that. Okay now this shell, um, what I decided, I was thinking about doing pen and ink and then I thought no you know what pen and ink is too strong for um, something as delicate as this so I'll use a pencil. So what I've done here where there are lines on the original shell. I've just come in with a pencil and I'm emphasizing the shape and the shadows and so on, just with pencil. And I think that that's enough. I mean, it would, it would look fine if you did it in pen and ink as well, with a, a dry liner, a not dry liner, with a, one of these things, a pigment liner. <laughs> But I just thought pencil would be quite nice with the shells. And then there's this one here too, which needs a little bit of um, emphasis. And then, when you've finished fiddling around like that, as much as you want, we might want to put a little bit of shadow underneath. And this is uh, cobalt blue, and I'm just putting some shadow underneath each shell to give it some presence on the sand. It's a different colour from any of the, the colours I've used to paint with. But I think that that probably works. So just put it on one side of each of the arms of the starfish. We won't well, we will actually. I was going to say we won't do it on the one in the sea, but of course there would be some shadow inside the water as well. So we'll do that too. And I'm just going to just ease 
even off the shape of this because it's a bit So I'm using a tiny bit of beige in white, mixed with white gouache. So when I said before you'd only need one colour, you only need white because if you want to make a creamy colour or something, just add it to the white gouache like that. And uh, that will work. So I'm just going to bring that out there a bit more. Just check my shape, you know, that's a little bit more like it. There we are, so I think that will do for now. Um, you could add some more seaweed, you could emphasize what you've got here. Maybe I'll just make that a little bit darker. Um, I want to thank everybody for their support and for making comments and for uh, being on the Facebook group as well and um, contributing over there. And um, yeah, I hope you're all enjoying painting along with me. And because uh, I know I am enjoying painting along with you. So let's hope we're all finding some relaxation in these difficult times. Oh, I tell you, oh, well, yes, no, I think that's enough. I'm going to stop. We've got to get this one up tonight. And if I don't stop now, we never will. So what I'm going to do is take off the tape so that you can see what it looks like without it. Let's hope it comes off okay. Remove this. I think I can say that the etcher paper was okay. It did bend a little bit while I was painting on it, but it's dried reasonably flat now. When you're pulling off the masking tape, try to pull it kind of at right angles. And it's much less likely to rip the paper then and don't do it too quickly. There we are. So there's the final painting, and I hope you'll enjoy painting this one with all its summery themes. Thanks very much for watching. Please give me a like and turn on notifications so you know straight away when a new video is going up. So for now, I'll say goodbye, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.